So I actually do spend a lot of time reading modern textbooks and modern field reports and modern history books about archaeological sites all over the world. But one thing I also spend a lot of time doing is digging through old archaeological and old history books from ancient sites all around the world. The reason being is that initially when these archaeologists who are more like antiquarians of, at the time, when they first interacted with these or when they first encountered these ancient sites, a lot of what they recorded is pretty interesting and a lot of their first impressions and original ideas are pretty interesting as well. Now, one thing that was pretty rampant back in you know, the mid 1800s to early 1900s is this idea of Atlantis or El Dorado. It's still, it's still around, but it was even more prominent then sometimes. And sometimes you get that bleeding through based on very peculiar findings and acknowledgements at these ancient sites. But even though their conclusions may not be correct, what they point out is pretty fascinating and may lead to some other very interesting revelations. So the first book I have an example is, um, Incidents of Travel in Central America, Chiapas, and the Yucatan. Now, this is covering Stevens and Catherwood um, and their expeditions, their multiple expeditions through Central, Central America and Southern Mexico, uh, Mesoamerica. It's a pretty fascinating read, and these are guys who really pioneered the study of Mesoamerica and really kicked off the exploration rush into the jungles of the Yucatan to discover all of these ancient sites, ancient stelas, especially artifacts that could be sold onto the black market uh, that's still happening today. <clears throat> this is a very interesting read. These guys didn't know what civilization they were looking at. They didn't know how old it was. They didn't really know where they came from. They didn't even know what the people were called necessarily. And in some ways, it was hard for them to believe that these great ancient ruins were built by the ancestors of the lowly Maya people who lived in that area. So even though some of their conclusions weren't entirely correct, a lot of their observations are pretty fascinating. Now, the next book is Ancient Times, A History of the Early World. Now, Incidents of Travel in the Yucatan is covering the New World. This is covering the Old World. The Old World is really just, is really just an easy way of saying all of the ancient civilizations that came out of Africa and settled around the Mediterranean Sea and expanded outwards from there. This is written by Breasted, uh, second edition, and I believe that this was written in 1916. And then it was published again in 1935 and 1944. So a lot of the information, some of the dates, this was actually written just about 30 years before carbon dating was ever invented and probably a long time before car carbon dating was ever used on many of the artifacts and sites that are listed in here. So some of the dates are wrong, but, but thanks to relative dating, they're actually not too wrong. And it's a pretty fascinating read from the very beginning of the stone age in the ancient world all the way until the bronze age and so on and so forth until the fall of rome pretty fascinating book i highly recommend this but today what we're going to be focusing on is a book that i picked up recently called a guide to ancient mexican ruins and this is written by by c bruce hunter i'm titling this as though this book is old it's really not old uh, it was written in it was written in 1977 um, but in the study of Mesoamerica, there really is nothing, the vast majority of books and sources available are not old because we are still in some ways in the infancy of studying Mesoamerican cultures. So even a book written in the 1970s, uh, especially as it pertains to something as enigmatic and uh, hard to nail down as the Olmec, even something like this could be wrong. I'm not saying that this book is but it's interesting to dive into these books and see what the ideas were. So the preface of this book starts with, during the past 20 years in leading archeological field study trips to Mexico and the Maya areas for the Museum of Natural History in New York University, I have always been amazed that a good scholarly guide has not been written for these ancient ruins. This book and the companion to it, A Guide to Ancient Maya Ruins, which we will also review, are my sincere effort to fulfill the need for this type of guide. It is difficult to write about ancient ruins without using technical jargon and a stack of statistics, but in this volume, I've kept it at a minimum. My concern has been with the development of ancient civilizations, how they functioned, and the importance of their works of art in architecture, sculpture, and minor crafts. 
I have noted especially the art styles and their influence by cross-cultural contact. This guide to ancient Mexican ruins does not include several important cultural areas either because ruins have not been found or excavation has not been carried out up to this time. Such areas as Tres Zapotes, La Venta, San Lorenzo are significant Olmec sites on the Gulf Coastal Plain. Even if one goes there, there is very little to see. So this really stood out to me and this is kind of the idea of why I made this video. All of the sites that he just listed Tres Zapotes, La Venta, and San Lorenzo. Studies have been much more in-depth in the last 40 or 50 years since this book has been written. And he even said that if you were even to go to those sites, say you were talking about La Venta, which I've been to, there would be very little to see. Well, I just went there recently and there were monuments upon monuments upon monuments that I was able to photograph and study and reflect on later on. So a lot has happened since the time that this book was written. So pretty close to the introduction of this book, he gets to talking about the Olmecs because they are, in fact, possibly the oldest civilization in all of Mesoamerica. Now, I say that, but I also don't mean it literally. They are just the oldest civilization that we have evidence of. But it seems that more evidence is coming to light that actually may suggest that there may have been established ruling civilizations that existed before the Olmec, maybe just southwest of the area of Tabasco or La Venta, where the Olmec are said to have predominantly resided. So it says, during the middle pre-classic period, one great civilization in Mesoamerica became extremely important. This was the Olmec. The Olmec heartland was on the Veracruz coast, where three large cities set the pattern for cultural development, La Venta, Tres Zapotes, and San Lorenzo. In these cities were pyramids and temples to honor their gods, plazas for their ceremonies, large populations of people organized into a structured society of priests and rulers, merchants, craftsmen, and farmers. Honoring the gods and the dead was a critical part of the Olmec's thinking. For this reason, tomb accessories and sculptures of the elite and their deities were essential for dignifying these traditions. So... This is probably the oldest civilization that's ever been found in Mesoamerica that actually has these artifacts available to us. So by the time this book was written, they had already known that. Because for a long time, it was heavily debated whether or not the Olmec even existed or if they were just a subset of the Maya, perhaps even the Aztecs or other surrounding cultures that we definitively had evidence of. And one large reason to this is the Olmecs didn't create their own stone pyramids and stone structures. Everything that they created was much more earthen, much more similar to the more northern North American civilizations, such as Poverty Point or Cahokia and so on. And when these sites were first being discovered, it was just murals, stela, sculptures, and the Olmec heads and some Olmec altars that had been discovered. And they couldn't quite figure out what civilization these belonged to, let alone the fact that this was its own civilization that predated all the rest. The choice of the lowlands of the Gulf Coastal Plain was important for this area had fertile soil, plenty of rainfall year-round, tropical temperatures for continuous crop cycles, the coast and river areas for transportation to other markets, and enough luxury items to create competition with other cultural areas. So at this point in time, archaeologists already knew all of this about the Olmecs. La Venta is best known for the gigantic sculptured heads, of which I've also seen in person. In style, these large sculptures have simple curving forms, little ornamentation, and are on a monumental scale regardless of the size of the sculpture, with a predominance of large heads. So when it says that they are on a monumental scale regardless of the size of the sculpture, this is because they've actually found many Olmec artifacts spread all throughout Mesoamerica. It seems that ancient cultures knew of these people, and obviously there are legends about them that have survived the test of time. Even when Europeans arrived in Mesoamerica, they were hearing the legends of the great Olmecs. But they also found Olmec artifacts that were being held onto by the Aztecs. And even some artifacts that were just a few inches long were built to seem like they were giant. And just taken as a photo with a simple black background, it looks like they are much bigger than they are. So the Olmecs did everything at a monumental scale. Burials and caches and tombs have revealed handsome carvings in precious stones, especially jades. The jades are so highly polished they resemble smooth, glistening gems as though covered with water. No people throughout history using only stone, wood, and bone tools have brought jade to such a high polish. 
This precious stone in shades of blue, gray, green, and white was used by the Olmecs for beads, earplugs, wrist and leg bands, shallow dishes for anointing the body with powders and oils, adzes for ceremonial use, deities, and full figure or head portraits of people of the time. So that's another interesting thing. This is actually identifying that each of these ornaments and figures that were made out of jade and even the basalt monuments, whether it be the heads or the altars or the sculptures, are actually portraits of people who lived at the time. I didn't actually know that by the 1970s, this had been decided that archaeologists had not only agreed that the Olmecs were their own civilization, but also that these were not just figurative people, but that these monuments were actually portraits of people who did exist at the time very similar to ancient egypt and i've made a video in the past that actually details some of the similarities between the olmecs and ancient egypt and i'll be sure to link that below because of the intrusion of oil companies at laventa most of the great sculptures were moved to via hermosa where they are now located in an open air park this i've also been to now, I really just covered some of the highlighted points as that's really all there is. It's a short book. It's a great read and a great overview of ancient Mexican culture outside of the Maya. The closest that we get to the Maya is really just the Olmec and other surrounding cultures relationship to the Maya. And there will be another book coming in solely focusing on the Maya. So by the time this book was written, archaeologists had not only agreed that the Olmec were in fact their own civilization, but they had also acknowledged the fact that in many ways the Olmec are in fact the mother culture of greater Mesoamerica. Now the Olmec often get thrown in with the Maya. So not only do people say that the Olmec are the mother culture of Mesoamerica, sometimes they leave out Mesoamerica and they say that the Olmec are the mother culture of the Maya, when in fact the Maya may, in, may actually be the mother culture of themselves, and they may have been growing their own civilization organically at the exact same time alongside the Olmec. Certainly there were cross-cultural ideas that were shared and maybe even the idea of divine kingship was somehow carried over from say the Tabasco area, even into to the Maya heartland somewhere in the Belize Valley, which is sometimes classified as the fertile crescent of the Maya world. So ultimately, there is nothing in this book that pertains to the idea that the Olmecs are time travelers wearing helmets or ancient Africans that had sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and established civilization in the heart of Mesoamerica. Um, no DNA evidence has ever proven that. And by the 1970s, nobody was even questioning where the civilization genetically came from. If you guys would like to visit some ancient Mesoamerican sites, well, then I'm actually leading an expedition with my good friend NEXT in March of 2024. We'll be gone from about March 17th until March 23rd, and we'll be visiting ancient sites in the Yucatan, ancient Maya sites, I should say. If you'd like more information, there's a link below. I'd love to travel, dine, and explore the jungles and ancient sites of the Yucatan with you. As always, thank you all so much to my patrons. Unfortunately, I may actually be closing down my Patreon here soon and opening up a YouTube memberships program. It seems like it's more conducive and more simple as a lot of you guys may not have or even want to deal with a Patreon account. And to all of my patrons, thank you so much for supporting me. If you'd like to come over and continue to support me on YouTube memberships, I would really, really very much appreciate that. You guys help fund my expeditions and my excursions into the jungle of Central America. And now I may actually be launching an expedition into the jungles of the Amazon as an expeditionary company just recently reached out to me literally in the last couple of days. And I'll be having a meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. about it. But as always, I'm Luke Caverns. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be back very soon. I just bought a new camera. I just got my background set up. Uh, no more green screens at all ever again. I'm working on a podcast. I cannot wait to get the ball rolling and spend a lot more time with you guys. Thank you all so much. I'm Luke Caverns. I'll catch you next time.